Hello, my name is Kevin with Lund Produce Company, and uh, today we're taking a look at a at a melon called Crane, and uh, it's got some decent size to it. It's marked pretty well, and um, the plants seem to be doing pretty good in this uh, very dry, hot environment. They're growing in dry land, no, non irrigated, and uh, so if you see the let me get the shadow up. You see the, the, the plant produces, uh, I see one, two, three, and then four on a small plant. So I'm impressed with the with the growth of these plants and the conditions that they have to, to deal with. So we hope to hope that they taste good. This is our uh, melon uh, field here, the melon patch, whatever you want to call it. Kind of a test garden. When we do have a pro occasionally we have an issue with the uh, uh, spotted cucumber beetle, but it seems to be doing okay. Uh, it's blooming. The bees are working this morning. There we go. Let's go see if we can see us a bee. There he is. Doing some pollinating so we can get some more crane melons. Example of of a jackrabbit damage here. I've got that going on, but they got to have something to eat out here. And it looks like there's plenty that they're not eating. So uh, I understand that this was variety was developed by the Crane family in Sonoma, California. I watched a, a video on the, that they had a melon barn. Here's some more rabbit stuff. There's another type, another variety of melon over here. So that's uh, jackrabbit damage. You can see where they got their teeth mark, and it looks like uh, they're snack on their. This is regional snack. It doesn't look like the whole field has got. And there's damage. This this is some of this was done overnight and some in the last three days. But it's not a hundred percent, it's just like I said, they gotta have something to eat too. But overall, the performance of the crane variety, this is my first time of, of planting it, seems to be I would have to say it's ex exceptional uh, with the conditions. This is like I said, no water. Other than we've had probably, oh, probably less than four inches of rain. Well, this one won't be going to the house. <laughs> so the Crane family did a good job, or the great-great-grandfather of Jennifer Crane. Did a good job on the variety. It's, like I said, it's the first time I've ever ever tried it. Now these plants are a little bit a little younger. Might be even a different variety. I'm not quite sure. pumpkin plant. So uh, the date is, it's a crane, um, the 
date is August 31st, 2014. And so in our area, it doesn't wait until sometime close to Thanksgiving, you know, middle of middle to late November, we get our first frost. So we got plenty of time to ripen these and, and uh, make a good crop. Uh, sometimes I prefer growing in the drier part of the season, melons anyway, will be uh, that, that I don't have the issue of over watering, which affects the flavor of, of uh, of your melons. So I think a little on the drier side at the right times is better for flavor. We have. I had a, we had a, a period this year of, of uh, excessive rainfall during the spring melon pr production time, and uh, the flavor wasn't any good on the melons. But I didn't buy the melons, so those are big old trees. They sting, but they won't bother me right now. Enjoy the video, even though it's long. Uh, hope you enjoy looking at the plants, the crane melons, and the bees. And uh, there's another bee. See, they're working this morning. There, that's good to see. That's that's making making more melons and honey. youngsters right now. I was able to identify them because I, I had never planted them before and then I realized when I bought the seeds that's what we were after was something different and, I, and uh, I'm glad that I did it so far. Now this is another variety. I believe this one may be Maybe, uh, I know we did some hearts of gold out here, but I don't know what these are. They kind of look neat. Cool looking.
get our spacing about right for dry land. Don't want them too thick. There's another snack. Well, they got that one. They get my big ones, aren't they? didn't have that last yesterday. It did not it was not eaten. Gosh. More damage there. Hmm. In this area is farther away. Well this is a nice one. I'm not sure that something will get it overnight. Well, when you're doing organic growing, you just have to physically remove things like that. It's getting close. To, that one's getting close to ripe. Should have turned it sooner. I think my scent of touching and rolling the melons probably would deter. Peter Cottontail and his brother Jack from uh, eating the crops. He like this is very beautiful, very nice. Delicious little insects. This is very nice too. And then look at that little baby. That's kind of neat looking. out of it. I don't see them getting a hundred percent but I've, I'm seeing quite a bit now. This video is turning into how much damage do I have. <laughs> but it's uh, these are our pumpkin vines. They probably need a little rain, a little water, but we're just going to see how they perform without supplemental irrigation. This is a Test variety test. Does. Usually we remove these. I don't have time to do it right now because I'm filming. But this is an example of a of a melon that we would remove and take it off the plant so that it's not symmetrical. I mean, I'm sure it would taste fine, but it's not genetics that we would want to reproduce or or uh, have have the plant putting energy into a non-marketable thing. But it'd be fine to eat. 
concerned about about marketing and then it gives the plant time to fill out the ones that are going to be your market melons. The term would be they would be considered coals. When they get to this stage is whenever everything wants it. This is whenever they get uh, ready for the rabbit. Thieves. Here's Now this one's split. We had a sh sh shower the other day and it was good. Pull it off, see. This one wasn't going to do any going to be anything that we could market anyway. Now if we do get a heavy rain, I'll have to come out and roll these guys around at a, if they get to a certain stage because then they have the tendency to, to rot on the bottom. But they're in fine shape now since it doesn't, we haven't had any rain in a while. Uh, but as far as when they're in this green stage, there's no really problems. But when they start getting, when they get ready to ripen, there's a critical stage that they'll start getting soft on the bottom, and it, uh, so you have to roll them so that they get uh, dry, so it hardens their skin back up. And then they take, uh, go through a heavy growth spurt too. Now this is the lower part of the field here. You start getting into bigger plants. Probably heavy production it should be. It looked like it was pretty good up there. I thought it just looked like the stem cracked a little bit. Okay. That one tomorrow.
watermelon plants. So I guess the film is going to be running out soon. Or not filmed, but yeah. The camera doesn't have you. Won't be able to keep going much longer. This is a pretty, this is a honeydew. Very really pretty. Pretty plant. Let's get you off. Those honeydews are nice melons too. Good healthy color. Here's a black diamond, a young black diamond watermelon. This is probably a crimson sweet. Okay. This is probably it. This is the end of the journey. Maybe another six days on that. 